What is up, everybody? Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, once again, it is another time for the weekly read of the on-chain analysis of Glassnode's Insight, week 46, 2021. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those uh, loyal subscribers over the years who have. I appreciate it. Love you all. Uh, while you're down there, in the description uh, is also my uh, library link. Follow me over there on the library. You'll be happy you did. Make some uh, dividends off of watching videos and whatnot. YouTube doesn't do that for you. And uh, uh, turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Just uh, kindness and compassion. You know the drill. Let's get it. All right, everybody. So week on chain, week 46, 2021, Bitcoin breaks to all new highs as the on-chain dynamics reach an inflection point. We analyze changes in spending patterns and identify tools for navigating bull market tops. <clears throat> the Bitcoin market pushed off at yet another all-time high this week, peaking at 68,742. Before pulling back to a low of 62,401, the market is currently consolidating, having held on to the majority of the gains and finding support at this new altitude. This week also saw the activation of the Bitcoin Taproot upgrade, a remarkable achievement for the network contributors and BTC holders. Congratulations. Now, that is them saying that, not me. So we will move on. <clears throat> This week, we will analyze three core concepts within on-chain analytics that describe the uh, inflection point in capital inflow, spending patterns, and tools to help navigate the next phase of the bull market. First, we have increasing spending by long-term holders and the macro impact on coin days destroyed. Two, we have estimating the magnitude of capital inflows as new investors buy distributed coins. Three, models for identifying market cycle tops. Identifying market cycle tops using both historical mean reversion methods and observations of on-chain spending. First off, the spending inflection point. In last week's newsletter, we described two tickle phases of a bull market and how market structure transitions from, uh, from smart money accumulation into distribution. <clears throat> One of the most powerful on-chain tools to track this inflection point is the concept of lifespan, measured by coin days destroyed, the CDD. Each unit of BTC accumulates one coin day per day. For instance, 0.5 BTC accumulates half a coin per day. Uh, when the coin is spent, the accumulated lifespan is destroyed and reset to zero and begins reaccumulating again. When old coins with large accumulated lifespans are spent, it will destroy a greater number of coin days and is often associated with the long-term investors exiting positions. Bull markets can usually absorb many months of this distribution, but as selling continues, the probability of establishing a local or global top increases. The chart, shows, uh, the chart below shows the 30-day moving average of CDD <clears throat> and demonstrates the current transition from heavy accumulation in July to November and into an uptrend signifying increased spending. Note also how the magnitude of CDD and uh, H1 2021 is notably higher and was sustained for months. Uh, in H1, what is H1? I don't know. Uh, H is not next to Q, so it's not a typo. Okay, this highlights how an abundance of demand through the bull uh, market was capable of soaking up the newly distributed supply. See, you can see a large amount of spending in November of 2020 through January, and spending is just increasing. All right. Taking profit. <clears throat> Binary CDD with a seven day moving average applied shows these trends in a more responsive format. This metric will trend higher when CDD is higher than the long term average for extended periods. 
We can see that while it is currently elevated, binary CBD is barely above a value of 0.2, which has parallels to September through November of 2020 before the primary bullish impulse. Spending of older coins is happening, although remains small in relative magnitude. <clears throat> Tiny. On a macro scale, we look to liveliness, which takes the ratio between cumulative coin day destruction and cumulative coin day creation. The simple interpretation, interpretation is this. Liveliness trends lower when more coin dormancy and hodling is in play. Liveliness trends higher when more coin day destruction and spending is in play. Steeper curves mean greater hodling and distribution as appropriate. Here we can see that after six months of hodling, downtrend green, liveliness has plateaued and, stated, or, and started a very slight uptrend. Similar to the CDD and binary CDD, an uptrend is only just being established and far shallower than what was seen in H1 2021. It again speaks to this inflection point in spending behavior by older hands. So it's still H1. I don't know what H1 is. A new metric introduced to Workbench as a preset this week is binary liveliness. Borrowing concepts from the binary CDD, this metric establishes a similar oscillator to identify trends of accumulation O and distribution 1, or sorry, 0 and 1, using two methods. Green, when liveliness is higher than the 30 DMA, return 1, else return 0. Blue, when liveliness is higher than the prior day, return one, else return zero. So paint it blue or paint it green. Uh, again, we can observe an uptick over recent weeks confirming an appreciable increase in coin day destruction. However, like our previous charts, it remains modest in magnitude. If the next phase of the bull market is indeed in place, this metric can be expected to reach and maintain higher levels for weeks to months. See how long that was? Yeah, that one too, it goes off the chart. So now we're estimating the capital inflows. We have established that spending behavior by more experienced investors has increased of late. The next step is to estimate the magnitude of sell side pressure and thus the capital inflows needed to absorb it. While a large amount of trading occurs off chain on spot and derivatives exchanges, we can layer in on chain data sets to establish a lower bound of capital inflows and outflows to the network. One of the most intuitive examples of this is the realized cap entity adjusted and in the case, uh, in this case to filter out internal transfers. This metric values every coin uh, in the supply at the price it last moved on chain reflecting the accumulation of net realized profit minus losses. Each time a coin is moved at a profit, it will add value to the realized cap. Conversely, Realized losses will subtract from it, reflecting capital outflows. The realized cap has resumed an uptrend and reached the, an all-time high of $450 billion as coins are distributed and revalued higher. This represents a net capital inflow of $50 billion since the previous peak in May set during the sell-off. <sighs> On a daily basis, the total value of coins sold at either a profit or a loss require a buyer with capital to absorb it. The chart below shows that between 1.5 billion and 2.1 billion in total value daily is being realized by spent coins this month. Given prices largely consolidated sideways through November, we can thus estimate this is a lower bound for total capital inflow into Bitcoin. <clears throat> On a relative basis, we can then compare this total realized value to the market cap or the realized cap to normalize by market size. This establishes a simple oscillator for total capital inflow versus network valuation. Previous market tops, namely the 2017 and 2021, that already occurred when the total value realized by spending exceeded 0.3% of the total market cap and 1% of the realized cap, which was often reaching much higher. In the current market, spending accounts for less than 50% of these thresholds this provides additional evidence that healthy, a healthy bull market demand should be capable of absorbing significantly more coin distribution.
Finding market tops. Ooh, everybody wants to know that. Identifying Bitcoin market tops is no easy feat. However, with over a decade of on-chain and market data at our disposal, we can use tools to identify behaviors and cyclical patterns that signaled market tops in the past. The first tool is the Mayer Multiple, calculated as a simple yet effective ratio between price and the 200 DMA. Using statistical methods, we can establish that a Mayer multitude value of 2.4 reflects an unlikely extreme where prices rally to 2.4x the, the long term. A well-observed 200 DMA and well-observed uh, 200 DMA. This provides an upper pricing band, currently sitting at 110,000, although it will trend higher or lower as the 200 DMA price changes. The top price model was originally created by a Willy Woo and is an empirical fitted model uh, multiplying the all-time average price of 6.1 thousand by a factor of 35. This gives a current cycle top at 214k. Note that all-time average price is much slower to change than the 200 DMA and thus the top price will be less volatile top model. Next is the battle-tested MVRVZ score metric. Using statistical normalization, this metric measures how many standard deviations the spot price is away from the realized price. Another way to think about this metric is that very high values mean the market is holding large unrealized profits, and thus the incentive to sell is at a maximum. Conversely, bottoms can be found when the market is heavily underwater and investor capitulation is most likely underway. The current market is around halfway after cooling off dramatically following the peak in April. As bull markets progress, older hands continue to sell and newer, less experienced buyers absorb the supply. Market bottoms are established when the smart money buys and holds uh, hodls a maximum of supply. And conversely, tops occur when large coin volumes have, uh, um, have had transferred to most weak hand speculators. The RHODL, R HODL, ratio captures this phenomenon by taking the ratio between one week and one year old realized cap HODL wave bands. Simply put, it will peak when the number of very young coins is high relative to older coins. The R HODL is consolidating at the moment, strangely similar to 2013, which su suggests a stable equilibrium between a one week and one year old coins. Lastly, we have the reserve risk metric, a tool that is packed full of on-chain wisdom. It can be considered as follows. Higher prices increase the incentive to sell. Makes sense. Every day a hodler chooses not to sell, they sacrifice opportunity costs with the expectation that prices will be higher in the future. When more hodlers choose not to sell, fewer coin days are destroyed and the reserve risk will trend lower. As prices rise, more hodlers will eventually reach their target sell price. As a result, more coins are sold, opportunity cost is realized, and reserve risk will trend higher and peak at blow-off tops. Given the remarkable accumulation that occurred over the last six months, reserve risk is impressively low at the moment. However, recently elevated CDD is starting to resume the uptrend, although with plenty of gas left in the tank. Realized, uh, oh wait, that's, um, no, that's it. That is it. Ooh, plenty of gas in the tank. Kaboom. So yeah, come check out these charts. They are really cool. If you like charts, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what uh, you think of all this. Do we have room to go? Are we are we down with the uh, this Willy Woo type price top model of 214,000? Or are you in favor of the mayor multiple? Or do you like the golden yogi one that I've shown way in the past here? Um, 436, just saying, just saying. So anyway, let me know what you think. I love you all, take care.
I'll see you next one. Peace.